we take credit for ourselves, which is our ego. Otherwise, the credit goes to the body, to the brain over which we have no control. How do we claim this credit? Nothing about the brain. We just eat our food and sleep like every animal. How is the food distributed? How is our body maintained? How we are able to fight diseases? How we are able to keep our brain sane and sound? We know nothing about it. It is done by the body, by some other force. It is a foolish thing. It is stupid to take credit for a matter over which we have no control. We never create this intelligence. It is given to us. This body is granted to us. Therefore, we have no control over the body or even knowledge of the brain. It is for this reason that I say in every book that I write, whatever I say is not from me. It is from a power which is above and beyond. I am merely the instrument. In that sense, we all are instruments of a higher power. We have now to see to what extent it is beneficial for us with all the knowledge of what has happened in the past, with all the knowledge of history, with all the knowledge of the resources of the earth. It is for us to see how far this invention is beneficial for us and where it can be harmful. We have not to do it blindly. First of all, we should have this knowledge that if we cease to exercise our brain, we stagnate, then we fall. Therefore, any instrument, any aid which excessively interferes in our own exercise of the brain or eliminates that exercise is injurious in the long run. You know, in the religious scriptures, everywhere, they say there is a tempter who is a devil, or who is Mara, or who is Maya, or things of that sort. This tempter is our own mind, when it does not discriminate between what is right and what is wrong. This has been granted to us, the mind to discriminate what is beneficial, otherwise, Nature won't bring us cooked morsels to put it in our mouth. We have to cook. The supply is there, but we have to cook it and to put it in our own mouth with our own hands. We have invented the computer. Nature has helped us, but we have to see how far it is injurious and how far beneficial for our own career. I have already said that the human brain has reached a stage of evolution where unification of humanity is essential. If our political leaders or our scholars or our editors are not able to understand this or to grasp the idea, it means that our brain is lacking in understanding one of the most important processes occurring in the human brain. If we do not unite, if we continue to have rivalry, competition and wars, we destroy ourselves. The intellect which is not able to understand that a weapon has been devised which makes it imperative for humanity to eliminate war and that we have to cooperate with this evolution and that all revelation and religious teaching has come to give us the broad outline of this evolution and the way we can cooperate with that. Otherwise, there is no reason why there should be revelation, except that the God of all this almighty universe, billions of suns, billions of earth, is particularly interested in the human race and has no other work to do. As I said one day, 
and only that much matter which will make one small marble brought from the sun and kept at say 200 miles from the earth only one marble jean says a pinhead i say one marble of the matter at the core of the sun brought from there and kept at say two or three hundred miles from the surface of the earth will melt mountains and dry up all the oceans. This is the power of the Almighty. In one sun, one small sun, there are more than three billions, three hundred billions in our galaxy alone. These are fools who are talking of this thing and that, these astronomers and physicists, these scientists, they are just arrogant, full of hubris, and they are deceiving the human being. Such a terrific creation could never be possible with itself. Look, we know of existence by our mind. If we are not alive, no one can know of existence, the world existence, the idea of existence springs from the mind. It is not in a stone, it is in the human mind. Therefore, there can be no existence without a mind. The very idea comes from the mind. Without a mind, there will be no existence. When we say that it can be, even after we are no more, and when there is no mind, we are projecting our mind in the future. It is mind again. It is the mind which begets the idea of existence. This idea of existence is in the mind I am. So existence and mind are inseparable. Do you follow me? There can be no existence without a mind. Those who say it is matter are fools. They have not the depth to understand. A mind and existence are inseparable. When you think that existence can be without a mind, you are projecting your mind again. Do you follow me? This means that the very idea of existence and mind are inseparable. In other words, there can be no existence without a mind. It is the mind which is at the basis of all this creation. It is intelligence. The universe is intelligence. What you see is intelligence manifesting itself as the universe. This is the crux of the Vedanta and the Shaiva philosophy. It is Shaiva, intelligence delightful intelligence which is manifested as the universe or Brahman which is again intelligence manifested as the universe. Nothing. The ocean, the stones, the mountain, ourselves, this all is intelligence. All is alive with life. This creation is not so simple as the simpletons believe it to be. I mean the professors who are specialized. In Germany, they have started to call them specialized fools, specialized idiots. This is what the professors themselves told me, that in the classes they are heckled as specialized fools. They were talking among themselves and laughing. I said to them, why are you laughing at? They said, now students are calling their professors specialized fools. The term is deserved. Because it is a state of stagnation now. There is no progressive knowledge. What is demanded is a progressive knowledge of the universe. At this time to say that it is matter, that the universe is of matter, when they know that even the concept of matter springs from the mind, is stupidity. The first thing is to explore the mind before they start exploration of matter. This is the wonder in us. 